Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. Ah! And welcome to uh, White Boy with a ring light and a camera making mediocre YouTube videos. Also known as Kink and the Geek remembers they have a YouTube channel. Uh, this is also could be called a uh, quarantine uh, midlife crisis. All I've been doing is going to work and coming home and doing it. And, well, yeah, the, <laughs> as she's pointing out, the if you ever one wanted to know, the hand belongs to the web slave. She's she's still around, putting up with me. Um, so I, I need it. I need some kind of creative outlet. Um, we are going to try to come back to the podcast. It's, if you're in quarantine right now, you understand the kind of pause because we're all kind of feeling it right now. So yeah, that's about what it is. So I decided, well, no, what it is, what it was, was I found out work had cheap ring light camera or cheap ring lights and I have a phone. So, what this channel is going to, what we're going to do with this is going to pretty much be whatever the we want. And so, here we go. Decided, we've been watching a lot of stuff on Netflix, Hulu, Disney, YouTube, things like that. And the, the most recent thing that I've finished binging is a former YouTube Red Only channel that is now on on Netflix called Cobra Kai. Now, Cobra Kai, for those who may not know, is a continuation of the story from the Karate Kid movies. At least one. It's one of those ones where you can at least see one and you know the concept, but if you see all three, you'll see stuff that... Uh, intertwines all three and for those who don't know what Karate Kid is and why you're watching a review for a TV show sequel although I am saying there's a lot of you Gen Zers out the older Gen Zers and younger Millennials who are really starting to dive into older content so Karate Kid for those who don't know is a story of Daniel Russo moving to California, getting involved with a bunch of kids who are part of a karate dojo called Cobra Kai, and him having to deal with it and learning karate and onward. So, this uh, story is, although Daniel Russo is a large part of it, he uh, he doesn't really is as much the main focus as his uh, rival from the movie um, Johnny. Uh, Johnny is the fair hair boy. He's the blonde kid. He's big man on campus. You know, top karate guy. You know, champion years in a row. And now we find Johnny looking down the barrel of middle age. Smack dab in the middle of burning, uh, middle aged, um, dead end job, living in a crappy apartment, drinks way too much, and as and, and he still focuses back on the four rounds of karate that basically Danny beat him in. In fact, there's a fantastic there's a fantastic line in the in uh, season two where they're they're having a moment. That where you're you're hoping, hey, maybe these two guys can kind of start seeing eye eye to eye, and and they go, oh hey, let's have another round of drinks, and Johnny's response is, last time I went four rounds with a Larusso, I got a foot to the face, uh, and basically Johnny ends up becoming a version of Mr. Miyagi or the leader of the original Cobra Kai to a group of well, kids who were being picked on. Um, his neighbor, Miguel, uh, 
who gets picked on by, of course, the, the popular kids. Um, there's the big girl, the big smart girl. She ends up joining. They're basically the misfits of the school end up joining Cobra Kai. And uh, while this is going on, Danny LaRusso is the big man in town. He's got a car dealership, uh, several car dealerships. He's got commercials. He's got billboards. He's basically in Johnny's face 24 hours a day without actually being in his face. And he, when he finds out that Johnny is opening up Cobra Kai, it gets on a mission to where he needs to stop it. Because from the original movies, Cobra Kai is the bad guys. There are really two things that made me love this series. One is the concept of whether you believe it or not, sometimes you're the villain in someone else's story. Because you start seeing from Johnny's view, you know. Here he is, he's school, you know, school top guy. He's had a fight with his girlfriend. They've broken up like, you know, kids in high school do. And all of a sudden, here's this new kid moving in on the girl that he, lo you know, that he loves and wants to try to work with. And you watch the movie. Danny throws the first punch in the, in the party scene. Uh, and it goes from there. And, then, and, you know, now he has to deal with what LaRusso did to him, you know. To him, LaRusso's the bad guy. If he hadn't stepped in, maybe he wouldn't be, you know, an alcoholic handyman. And I think that's a very interesting concept because we all think we we get to that point to where in our, in our lives or in, in any form, especially when you're in school, you think, oh, well, I, this person's picking on me. I didn't do anything wrong. But the you turn it around. That person is saying, well, why'd that person do this? I wasn't doing anything. And so it's, to me, it's a really interesting concept of seeing almost getting two sides of the, of the same story and seeing how different it is. Um, the other point, and this is what kind of makes me, made me do this because I am the age of what Johnny and Danny, you know, who J Johnny and Danny are, uh, uh, are. And you do see these sides of two guys who are staring down the barrel of middle age, you know. You know, the, you know, the night's getting shorter, you know. W you know. Where are you at your point in life? I mean, when you see when when Johnny has the epiphany to to do what he does, the the fight that brings him into it, he's he's outside a crappy convenience store, eating convenience store pizza on a curb, to where the the the, the female bum that's you know sitting across with him is telling him to move on. Don't you, you're you're in my area. <laughs> um. And then you also have this idea of, you know, Danny looking back at what Mr. Miyagi meant to him in his life and how he is trying to bring more, you know, he's missing his mentor. You know, he's got, a, you know, one young kid can't take his face out of his video games who at one point they tell him to stop drinking the butter at lobster night. Um, he's got a teenage daughter that he's, you know, of course, you know, his oldest is a, his teenage daughter who is a teenager in high school that he wants to protect. He's the dad. He wants to be, you know, he wants to be the most important person in her life. And I think a lot of fathers feel that way. Uh, the good ones, at least. Um... And I think that starts, that can really resonate to someone who, a Gen Zer like myself, who was, you know, young when the movie came out. And, well, I, I, I want to say Ralph Macchio was like in his 20s when he did Danny LaRue. So, I mean, he was like 27 uh, playing a high school kid. But that's neither here nor there. But. I think that he, um, 
at you looking at your life as you go down, it's it's like, okay, what have I done with it? Where am I going? You know, is this all there is? Okay, I'm an adult. Now what? And you also have that idea that sometimes shit that happens to you in high school can fuck with your head long into your, your, your age. And that's another thing that this, this movie or uh, this, this show kind of goes into is they're, they're 40, 50 years old. What happened in high school shouldn't be making that big of a difference. But then all of a sudden you're staring down the barrel. I keep saying that, but the person that, that, that did whatever you did to you in high school is there. And as much as there is also, because there is a the other storyline of the kids, because you have the um, Miguel and the Cobra Kai, who slowly go into, you know, going from the misfits of the school to Cobra Kai, and then you have um, the other kids, Danny's daughter. Who are also, he, he, you know, with the whole trying to deal with balance and stopping Cobra Kai at any means necessary. Um, also rings interesting because what happens when the bullied become the bullies? You know, that's part of, part of this storyline too because you think about it, Johnny was you know, at one point bully. Now here he is, he's uh, you know, alcoholic handyman. <laughs> and you yeah, and you you find out, you know, he, he former rich kid. You know, well, of course he was, you know, he was the rich kid. He, he went to the you know and it's interesting also to see, you know, at this point now LaRusso is where Danny was in high school. I mean, sorry. LaRusso is now where Johnny was in high school. Um, but doesn't see the irony of, you know, what's going on. And it's just, it, it's a lot deeper than just a Karate Kid um, continuation. So that's basically what it is. I mean, you can call this sequel. It's a continuation of a story. But you're getting another side. It's almost kind of like the the idea of finding out who Vader was, you know, who Anakin was in the, in the prequels, you know, because what you saw in the the first three, and you know, yeah, and that's what I got. I mean, it is because I'm trying to do this in a non spoiler way because it it really is a good show. It is. It is it is an extremely good show. There's two seasons. Um, I think they're no longer than maybe 30, 35 minutes, maybe more. Because again, the first season was at least on um, uh, YouTube, had the, the YouTube Red, was with the premium channel. So they had that. They had um, Rooster Teeth's uh, Laser Team um, and a couple other shows. They had like this kind of Hunger Games with some of the younger YouTubers, the popular YouTubers at the time. Um, which makes me kind of interested to see what the other stuff was like because they really put into some production values. Um, it also plays on the um, nostalgia factor for, again, the people who originally saw the movie um, as, you know, you're a teenager younger adult because they play a lot of the 80s hair metal you know that would have been popular back then they use a lot of the same there, there's a lot of the same music from the soundtrack that um gets used and especially in season two there's a very a, a touching moment or touching but there's a very po poignant moment in what's going on where they use one of the old songs um, that isn't that was made for the you know for the movie. It wasn't like the um, 
because I know they used um, Bananarama's Cruel Summer in the soundtrack, but this was more of the, you know, like the montage song that wasn't really a, a huge hit unless you saw the movie. Um, so it does have some of that nostalgia factor of it. And it's also so kind of interesting to see you you're seeing someone who is stu almost kind of stunted as 18, 19, 20 years old, especially dealing with 2020 or 2018, I think was, I think when it originally came out, you know, um, so that, that, that's also an interesting, it, it's, it's a really good, if you were just kind of thinking about saying it and we're just going, eh, it's kind of kid, give it a chance. Um, my, my thing is always give a show at least about three episodes. If you're not, if you're not at least invested in some point, three episodes in, the show's not for you and just go on do what you need to do. You know, go put on Stranger Things. Put on the British Baking Show. Maybe talking about that a lot, too, because that's been my... Life sucks. Let's watch a really sweet show and watch people want to help each other. <sighs> 2020's been a shit show. Um, that's going to be my one cuss word. So if you like this, you know, there's these like and subscribe thingies. Not doing this for any kind of YouTube fame. I'm doing this. I'm bored as. I can only want to try so much. Uh, so that that's about it. I'm rambling at this point. So this is your friendly neighborhood geek in the well, sorry, the famous bar. May give you a tour. And yes, this is actually our own home. And our own thing. This is actually Alien Head Vodka. So, as we close off uh, our podcast, be good or be good at it.